welcome, welcome, welcome to tonight's Poetry Jam. I'll be your host, DJ BZ, on the ones and twos. Miss Norma Bryant Howard is coming to you live and direct from 2020 Studios, where it's always cool, always mellow. For all you cat and kittens out there, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the poetry. Jam. Jackson, the man that's over there tickling the ivory. He's worked with me for many years, Mr. Jackson. A lot of love out to you this evening because, brother man, you're killing it over there. You're doing a, a really, really good job. Have you ever wondered if, how, when, and where you would find true love and find someone who cared? Sometimes it takes a lifetime, and sometimes you never do. But special things take a while, if they're really, really true. And now that I've found you, I know it was all worth the time. You love me unconditionally, so real and so true. And now I have to wonder how. bring me joy and happiness in everything you do. And I just want to thank you and send you out all of my love to you. Now that poem was entitled, Have You Ever Wondered? Have You Ever Wondered? It's a very beautiful and it's a very romantic poem. It sort of sets the mood for us this evening here at the 2020 Studios. So happy that each and every one of you all have decided to join me and DJ BZ this evening. So come on in. I want you just to sort of grab a Coke, grab a bottle of water, and just sort of sit here with me and just find out how we're going to groove to this jam, this poetry jam this evening. So this poem that I read, it was such a sweet, such a caring poem, and it officially kicked off the How Do I Love You poetry series that we're about to embark on for the whole month of October. So we decided that we're going to do a poetry contest. So if anyone is ready for a poetry contest, oh, I see all of my friends are coming in here with me this evening. So if you're ready to to embark on a poetry contest, it's going to be during the month of October. I want to hear some original works by you, and you're going to just send those poems to me. We're going to download those bad boys. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it at the very end of our show, our poetry jam this evening. Hey, I see someone from Seneca High School. I see Elaine. I see my roommate from KSU, Miss Miss Celeste Turner. So we're going to have a really, really good time this evening. So stick with us. We got a little music, and I do want you to know that I am not 
responsible and I do not own the rights to any of the music that you're going to hear this evening because we're going to blow it out here tonight. So thank you so very much for joining us this evening. So if you've been hanging tight with me during the whole six months, I can't believe I'm getting ready to have my 29th show, which is this evening, my 29th show. So if you've been hanging tough with me for the whole 29 weeks that we've been together. We've talked about an array of topics. We've talked about everything from how to do a dating profile, what not to say when you go out on a date with your, with your, uh, with your boo. We also talked about masculine confidence versus sexual confidence. So we've talked about all sorts of things since we've been together for these past six months. So tonight we just thought we'd have this Poetry Jam over here at Studio 2020, and we're going to talk about how to reach your man through the emotions of poetry. Such sweet words, such sweet sounds, and a lot of people I've heard are almost turned off by poetry. Maybe they had a bad, bad experience when they were in elementary school uh, or even middle school, and it sort of turned them off, and they just never did get into poetry. So hopefully I can convince you this evening that it's really a safe place, and it's a wonderful place to go and visit. And there's all sorts of poems out here in the world. Just go on the internet, and it'll blow your mind. Go over to the bookstore, it'll blow your mind mind. So we're going to talk about sexy poems. We're going to talk about sensual poems. We're even going to talk about romantic letters that someone can send you or that you can send someone. So we're all trying to be in the trying to be in the zone this evening. We're all just staying here in the zone this evening. So if you sort of kind of remember the third stanza from our poem that I just read to you, and it goes a little bit like this. It says, and I'm going to put on my specs. I'm going to cheat a little bit tonight. I'm going to put on my specs. It says, you love me unconditionally, so real and so true. And now I have to wonder, how did I live, baby, without you? That's the four stanzas from that, well, that's a stanza from that poem that I just read to you. And if you were going to recite that to your sweetheart, would you just say, uh, you love me unconditionally, so real and so true, and now I, I have to wonder, how have I lived without you? Would you say it like that? Hopefully not. Hopefully you're going to be able to just dig way down deep in your sensual and your seductive self. You're going to pull that voice out that's just sort of laying dormant down inside of you. And you're going to say some words that are beautiful words that, that any man would love to hear. But somebody's probably saying, but how do I do that? I'm going to give you uh, two or three little tips on how, what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to lower our voice because as females... Not the guys, but as females, we have a tendency to have that high-pitched voice. And a lot of times, it almost sounds like it's coming out of our out of our nose. When we say something, we may say, I don't know what's going on. And it's just like, mm, and it's like all up here, I'm nasal. But we've got to learn to bring the pitch down. Bring that pitch down. We have to speak in a relaxed manner. We've got to speak slowly, and we've just got to let those words flow out as we exhale. Let those words flow out as we exhale. I see my friend Linda's here. I see my sister Margie is watching, and my roommate Celeste Turner. And we were in uh, college just a few short years ago. <laughs> Okay, if you believe that when I got a pink bridge, I'm going to sell you too. Okay, so we're going to just say uh, that say, those same lines from stanza three. Here we go. And we're going to say, you love me unconditionally. So real and so true. And now I have to wonder, how did I ever live? without you. A 
big difference from saying it with a lot of mentality in my in my voice. So you got to dig real deep, go down and find that sexual voice that we all have. As I said, that's probably been laying dormant for so many years in your body. So you're going to find that pitch. You're going to have a relaxed manner. You're going to speak slowly and you're going to let those words flow out very sensually from you. And someone saying, but I don't have a boo. That's perfectly all right. If you don't have a boo, you can go ahead and you can you can go ahead and practice so that when you find that boo, you'll know exactly how you want to recite those poems to him and where the poem's going to come from. Maybe you're a poet. Maybe you like going to uh, the bookstore. I mean, you know, I found myself roaming around at Carmichael's bookstore the other day. Took a few pictures over there. So I found myself over at the bookstore. You can find um, there's a whole section of, of poems and bookstores. You can go Barnes and Nobles. Uh, you can find them on the internet, all sorts of places. And when you find your poems, what you're going to do is read them out loud. Hey, Miss Mercy, what's going on tonight? You are going to read your poems out loud. You're not going to say them as we say, read them to ourselves, reading them in our head. You got to read it. And it, when you read it out loud, that's when you got to feel. You got to feel those poems and how it's feeling. Hey there, Miss Pamela. She says, yes, work the, what am I working? Work the services. <laughs> work the services. So you got to practice reading your poetry out loud. And in a minute, I'm going to tell you the reason why it has such Im a big impact on, on men, why it has such a big impact on men, if you do it the right way. So we're going to do you know, I love to do this. You know, I love to run into the chat. Okay, so what we're going to do tonight is I've, I've got a poetry starter. I've got a poetry starter. When I was a teacher in the classroom, I would always write on the board a story starter. And I'd write a sentence and the kids would have to finish the whole story from what the way I started it. So I've got a poetry starter that I'm going to give you and you're going to go to the chat room and you're going to finish the poem. It's not a contest. It's not a speed test. We're just going to just leisurely do it and I'm going to read up as many of them as I can. So this one is real, real easy. You've been listening to this one all your life. So here we go. You're going to, I'm going to start, uh, start the poem off. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Nothing is more important then, okay, you finish it. Go to the chat. You're going to go to the chat and finish that simple poem, and I'm going to read what you just wrote down. So you can begin. And I think I want to have a little music in the background. You know, I always call it a little thinking music in the background. So DJ BZ, will you play us a little music so that we can think? Here we go one more time. I'm going to say, roses are red, violets are blue. Nothing is more important than, than what? Go ahead and finish that. I know I got some, I've got some uh, English teachers in the audience. I've got some, some speakers and motivational speakers in the audience. Linda Kane said, roses are red and violets are blue. Nothing is more important than being with you. Pamela R. Garrison said, more important than loving you. All right. Okay. Keep our music going to keep our, keep us in the mood so that we can come up with these outstanding words that we're going to complete that that little tiny part with. That being with you, then loving you. Come on, Phyllis Slaughter. Come on, girlfriend. What you gonna say? All right. Nice music in the background for our poetry jam this evening. For our poetry jam. All right. Okay. I know my sisters are here this evening, and I want to hear what they are going to say in the chat room. What are you going to say in the chat room? Because I got another quick one that I'm going to do. Okay, there's Miss Pamela R. Garrison. Okay, all right. I think they got a little shy on me. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do the second one. The second one is, here we go. Tick-tock, tick-tock. 
my love for you, my love for you is what? Tick tock, tick tock. My love for you is, all right, my love for you. Okay, BZ, let's play a little bit more of that. I like that. So cool, so calm, so relaxing, so relaxing. Okay, the second story poetry starter is Tick Tock, Tick Tock, My Love for You. Okay, all right. All right. Give it about 10 more seconds. Okay. Linda Kane says, Tick tock, tick tock, my love for you will never stop. Okay, I'm, I'm waiting for my English teacher to, to bring it on home. <laughs> I was waiting for my English teacher to bring it on home. Okay, it will never stop. Okay, so poetry really isn't hard. It's really fun. It's really exciting, and it can set the mood for you uh, when you're with your sweetheart. It can set the mood. It can set the mood for you if you're absolutely at home by yourself. It can set the mood. Listening to some nice music, reciting some poetry, it can set the mood for you also. Okay, so we're going to go on uh, with, uh, with our little discussion this evening. So when it comes to romance, when it comes to passion, and when it comes to love, one of the biggest mistakes you can make is to underestimate the power of love words. You have, you can actually underestimate the power. They are very, very powerful words. And I know that uh, you probably uh, took classes like I did myself when I was in college. I guess they're doing it in high school now. When you took uh, college classes uh, and you talked about Shakespeare and all of the love poems and sonnets and things that he wrote and how many, many, how many, many years ago was that? So this is something that has continued throughout the ages. So being um, able to express yourself to your loved one, if you have that ability to express yourself to your loved one, it's almost magical. It's almost magical because it's really almost like a gift. If you have that ability where you can express yourself to your significant other, your husband or whatever. Pamela says, makes my heart pop with the thoughts of your love. Tick tock, tick tock, my love for you makes my heart pop with the thoughts of your love. Oh, I got, I've got a few romantics in the audience this evening. Thank goodness, a few romantics here this evening. So most important is uh, affectionate poetry, and romance messages are really easy. They're almost like little small gems that, you know, that the world has given us. And we can use these little gems that the world has given us to actually get closer to our sweetheart, our husbands, our significant other. We can get closer to that. So the big question is how and why. It's all based on emotions. It's all based on emotion, and uh, and uh, and they have sort of like a sentimental value. They have a sentimental value, and they can make our man feel really good. Hey, there's my friend, Miss Brenda Greenlee Stetsonberg. She's watching us this evening. So I have a poem that uh, is sort of like a very sensual poem, and I'm going to ask Breezy to just play a little soft music. And that's also going to let you know it's getting you in the mood. It's very, very short, but does it carry a wallop? It carries a wallop. And the name of it is Lay and Play. Hey, there's my friend, Miss Betty Maxwell. All right. Here comes this part. Lay and Play. Lay me down. Get ready to play. Do you have the energy? Because I got all day. Lead me where you want us to go. I'm ready and willing, but baby, let's take it slow. All right. Lead me where you want us to go. I'm ready and willing. Let's take it slow. 
can't, what man wouldn't love to hear you say that to, tonight? <laughs> what man would not love to hear you say that tonight uh, or a night in the future? Because beautiful love words, as I just said, they never go out of style. And romance and romantic expressions of caring for someone will never go out of style. Pamela Garrison said, lay and play. That's right, go lay and play. But then there are some people who just say, oh, absolutely not. I do not like poetry. I, like I said a minute ago, I, I'm not good at it. But I think I'm pretty good at writing a love letter. I'm really, really good at writing what we call a good old-fashioned love letter to express my feelings. So I have one here. Okay, and I'm going to call this Anonymous. Dear Anonymous, right now I'm thinking of you and wanted to capture my feelings in words. You see, I know I'm not the best at verbally expressing what you mean in my life, but I've always strived to show you in other ways. And that is why at this very moment, my thoughts of you have me smiling. Just the thought of wanting to be with you. In a split second, the influences you have on me adds brightness to my day. That's why I wanted you to know that I truly, truly am thinking of you. Yours truly. A love letter written from someone's, straight from someone's heart. To just to let her man know how much she thinks of him. So words are powerful because you know some of the best poems, some of the best poets that we have around, um, I'm going to see if anybody can guess who they might be, some of the best poets around. Who might they be? Somebody might know that. Okay, somebody may know that. Hey, Miss Kat uh, Chatoria Young visiting with us this evening, Miss Betty Maxwell. Some of the best poets and I'm going to tell you in just a second, some of the best poets around are recording artists. Okay, I want you to check this guy out because maybe you've heard him before because he has he is actually dedicating a beautiful, sensual a poem to a whole bunch of women. He's no longer with us, but he dedicated a whole lot of beautiful words, and he was a recording artist. Just listen for a moment. Everything and the answer to all my dreams. You're my sun, my moon, my guiding star, my kind of wonderful. That's what you are. I know there's only only one like you, there's no way they could have made to. All right. Yeah, you're all, all right. I'm living for. You're all I'm living for. Oh, I tell you some sweet poetic words. Let's see who knows who that man was. He's no longer with us. Let me see. Can somebody put it in the chat? Who was that famous recording artist? Anybody know who that was? I'm going to have to tell you. Okay, that recording artist was Barry White. That recording artist was Barry White. And did he have some sweet, sensual poetry? Sweet, sensual poetry. Okay, Breezy, let's hear another one. Would hold me tight Save your goodbyes Unto the morning light oh, But don't let me right. be lonely Tonight okay. Say goodbye And say hello She'll love good to see you, baby. But when it's time to go, don't say yes. yes. 
And please don't say no, cause I don't want to be lonely tonight. All right, all right, all right. I think Miss Betty Maxwell got it right. It was Isaac Hayes. That took us back a minute or two. That was Isaac Hayes. So Barry White and Isaac Hayes, so they were, oh my God, they were just so incredible. Recording artists, but they first started out to be, uh, to, to say these songs and, and to sing these songs, you first have got to be a poet. And I'd sing both of these guys were poets. So hopefully we got, we're, let me check my time over here. Okay, so I thank you so very much for joining with us this evening. And we're going to have this series, How Do I Love the Poetry series, that's going to be running for the entire month of October. And we are going to have a contest. It's going to be entitled, How Do I Love the Poetry Contest? And I'm going to give you a few contest rules. Okay, what I'd like for you to do is to submit a 60 to 90 second video, an original, because you're going to write, those who want to do this, an original love poem, writing an original love poem. And it's going to be 60 to 90 seconds. Send the video to me via Facebook Messenger. Number three, there will be a $5 entry fee that can be submitted on PayPal or Cash Out by going to my website, which is www.princecharmingway.com. The grand prize winner, and we got an awesome prize for the grand prize winner, will be announced on October the 30th, and that will be our Halloween show. Submission deadlines, however, for the poetry is October the 20th. So we would like for you to go to the website, which is www.princecharmingway.com, uh, because we will have all of the contest rules uh, posted on my website no later than tomorrow night at 6 o'clock p.m. But, but that'll give you all the way up until October the 20th to be in our, in our How Do I Love You contest, poetry contest. So you'll be able to read all the good stuff tomorrow evening. So as I said uh, when we first started, I think either I said it or the DJ said it, that I do not own the rights to any of this music because we're getting ready to take off these readers. We're getting ready to put on the groove glasses. And I'm going to just say, before we get on out of here, make sure that you register to vote. Make sure that you practice social distancing. Make sure that you have your mask on every time you leave the house. And let's just groove for a minute or two with that music. I don't even know the name of it. But I can say that I do truly, truly love it. So let's just groove for about 15, 20 seconds. Listening to the music. Thank you so very much for being a part of our poetry jam this evening. Thank you, each and every one of you, for joining us. Let's just groove. Same.